This is where the internet comes ashore. Viewed in Cornwall, the seaside town is one of the centres for spying in the digital age, a crucial staging post in the infrastructure of the internet. Either it's the front line for fighting terrorism or for the mass surveillance of citizens in violation of their basic rights. Today, Parliament's Intelligence and Security Committee, or the ISC, will give its verdict, with the publication of a long-awaited report into the Edward Snowden revelations. Directly below me is an underseas cable that carries internet traffic from the UK to the US. So every time you make a Google search, you like a Facebook photo, or you send an email, that travels under the sea 4,000 miles to America, 4,000 miles back in less than a second but it doesn't return to your computer untampered with. Some of that data is siphoned off. This is where it goes. A little way down the coast is the GCHQ listening station at Bude. Since 2011, according to documents leaked by Snowden, it has been hoovering up data from more than 200 underseas cables as part of a program called Tempora. That includes UK citizens' personal emails and their internet browsing history. Well, it's not all huge satellites and tapping undersea cables. Take this SIM card. It's made by a Belgium company called Gamalto. They make two billion SIM cards a year. Chances are your phone has one in it. And they believe they were hacked by either GCHQ or the NSA. That means they could have had access to your most private communications, the calls you make, the text messages you send. If you or I were to hack into Gamalto and do the same sort of thing, well, we'd probably be going to jail for a very long time. According to an internal report disclosed by Snowden, GCHQ has increased its ability to monitor personal data by 7,000% since 2008. Back in November 2013, spy chiefs were called in to explain their agency's work to the ISC. The Intelligence and Security Committee, with its new powers, investigates the operations and scrutinizes the capabilities of the intelligence agencies. There are strict criteria in the law which provide safeguards to protect privacy to the maximum extent possible. So in a sense, I, I don't particularly like talking about the privacy security balance because I think it's a false choice. I think our job is to provide intelligence around security which enables security in a way which safeguards privacy to the maximum extent possible. Spies are, of course, going to spy. It's their job. But it's the ISC's job to check their power. And the only real challenges to GCHQ have come not from the ISC, but from NGOs and human rights organisations bringing their own legal cases. The country's most secretive court, the Investigatory Powers Tribunal, recently ruled that this bulk intelligence gathering was fully lawful. But it also said that prior to December 2014, GCHQ intelligence sharing with the NSA under that agency's PRISM and upstream mass surveillance programs had breached fundamental human rights. What we need is proper, beefy, toothy in oversight from a body which, unlike the ISC, isn't linked into the executive and which has proper investigative powers. And that's just not what we've got at the moment. If the ISC report is a whitewash, that's only going to intensify the debate on our private data and what happens to it as it makes its way around the world. Tom Cheshire, Sky News.